Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Invera at the Board. Today we're going to talk about five strategies that you can use to get your next air permit. So as we've talked about numerous times before on previous at the Board videos, permits and the permitting process can be long and complex with lots of moving parts. However, permits and the permitting process is essential to any capital project, large, small, you know, high growth, low growth, um, any project that has the potential to uh, emit air contaminants will need a permit from the AQMD and permits need to be in hand, in hand, before any construction can start. Now there's some interpretation as to what the word construction means. Um, some people will argue that just having a piece of equipment, permitted equipment on site, even though it's not connected, may fit the definition of construction. Some people have definitions of construction when you break the foundation. But nonetheless, you want to be careful because construction, however you define it, cannot start until the permit is in hand. It's best in uh, when you're in these situations, you're managing a gray area here, that you simply avoid having the equipment or having purchased the equipment at all before you have your permit in hand. And so you want to build the permitting process into your overall project timeline so that you can have your permit in hand before you take delivery of your piece of equipment. Now, with all of the moving parts associated with a permit application and the permitting process, one common question that we get asked all the time here at Invera Consulting is, how can I get my permit quickly? And there is a few, there are a few ways to get your permit quickly and of the way, and a few of those ways we'll be talking about here, we'll be talking about five of them here. Out of all the ways, there is one way to ensure that you get your permit quickly without any roadblocks and with very little complications. We'll talk about that later, but just know there are things you can do. We're gonna talk about five of them here. This is actually a mistake. It shouldn't say six, it should say five. And these five strategies that we're gonna talk about, we've used in the past to simplify the permitting process for our clients. And we're gonna show you these six strategies um, today. Because overall, the main goal when going through the permitting process is just to get the permit. And get the permit as soon as possible so that you can go on and start construction of your capital project. And the quicker you can get the permit, the quicker you can start construction, and the quicker you can just be on your way to doing the next big thing. And so today we wanna to talk about the five strategies that you can use to simplify the permitting process. So let's get started. Number one, you wanna retain staff who understand the permitting process. Now this may seem counterintuitive, but the process or the permitting process is very complex. It's very long and complex. And so when you go down the, ro the road of permitting, you want to be sure that you have someone on staff, either that you hire or you contract with, that can guide you through the permitting process and sort of show you the way of what hurdles need to be cleared to get your permit. Now, there are a number of ways to ensure that you have the right staff or you've retained the right folks for your project. The best way is simply to know if they're a certified permitting professional or not. Now, I'm not saying that that's the, the best way, but if you don't have any information, other information in front of you, the fact that someone is a certified permitting professional means that they've been certified by the air district to prepare permits and you can assume that they have some sort of background 
with the permitting process. However, having a CPP on staff is not a prerequisite for preparing a permit. It simply just helps. As we said in a previous video, anyone can prepare a permit application, but only those who understand the AQMD's permitting process and the, who understands how to prepare a complete permit application will have, um, will have a success when going through the permitting process. That can be a CVP or not, but regardless, you sort of need to do your due diligence. So number one, retain staff who understand the process. Number two, you know, if it makes sense, if it makes sense, I'll say it again, discuss the project with the AQMD. Now, when I say if it makes sense, you know, you're going to need to use some judgment because, you know, if you're installing a small boiler or a small engine, it may not make sense to talk to the AQMD about your project. On the other hand, if you're trying to permit a power plant uh, within the air district here, then you may want to talk to them because there's going to be a few more hurdles that you're going to have to clear as opposed to just sim uh, permitting a simple engine. So depending on the complexity of the project, it may be helpful to talk to the AQMD. And that's where you're going to have to use a little judgment. Now, a couple of things that, you know, a few things that you can talk to the AQMD about include you know, is this piece of equipment exempt under 219? Uh, sometimes uh, you run into situations where a piece of equipment is not, it appears to be exempt, but it's not clear cut. Again, it's a gray area. You know, you may want to talk to the AQMD about, the, uh, about that situation. You know, is it subject to CEQA? You know, maybe the AQMD can help you, help you there, but a lot of times, if you have a CEQA project, you're gonna have a lot of staff who sort of know, know the ropes, and so this may be a simple, an, you know, simple question with a simple answer, but sometimes it may be helpful to talk to the AQMD to see if this is subject to CEQA or is it exempt from CEQA. Uh, most, another important part you may wanna clarify with the AQMD is uh, the new source review process, and more specifically, the emission standards or the control technology that may or may not be needed for your piece of equipment. Uh, when we start talking about controls and control technology, we are uh, referring to BACT or best available control technology. And so for burners, a, a, a very common question is, you know, if I have a, a 50 million BTU per hour natural gas boiler, what sort of emission standards uh, do I need to meet? Do I need to meet 5 ppm NOx, 9 ppm NOx? Um, does it have to be a low NOx burner? A lot of times having this discussion is helpful before you go out and purchase equipment. Because once you've talked, spoken to the AQMD about what is needed in terms of control equipment, then you'll know of what kind of equipment to go and buy out on the market. And so again, if it makes sense, discuss your project, especially the emission standards with the AQMD. You also want to talk about potential roadblocks. Um, do, do they see any roadblocks with permitting this piece of equipment um, at your facility? And I'm mainly focusing on public notification here. You know, if you're, you know, within a thousand feet of a school, you're going to have to go through the public notification process. Maybe the community that you're, you're in, uh, when you go through the public notification process, maybe they cause a lot of problems. Maybe they requ require more effort in terms of, you know, doing your air quality analysis. So some of those roadblocks you won't really know until you talk to the AQMD. And then lastly, you know, you want to know how can I get this permit through the processing process quickly? How can I get the permit expedited? And a lot of times when you ask this question, you're really looking for, or, or what, the question that you're really asking is, what sort of data do you, the AQMD, need from me, the applicant, to permit this piece of equipment as quickly as possible? You know, we want our permit as quickly as possible so we can do, you know, we can start construction and get on with our business. And you, the AQMD, I'm sure want to not be known as the roadblock through this process and 
you know, if you want to move this permit through your approval chain as quickly as possible, what information do you need? And again, you can get that by having a meeting with the AQMD. But I will say, you know, depending on the complexity, not every project needs to be discussed with the AQMD. You're going to want to use some sort of judgment there. But if it makes sense, go ahead and discuss it with the AQMD. Number three, keep all the stakeholders informed. When it comes to permitting, permitting can impact folks across an entire organization. It can, you know, it can impact operations because a lot of times the folks in operations will want to know, you know, we, you know, we talked about this initiative and this high growth project here, you know, that's going to be great for us in terms of operations. When can we start? When can we purchase the equipment? When, when is that? you know, better future, um, when is that going to start? And so a lot of times operations want to know, you know, simply when is the timeline? When can we start this um, new project? When it comes to maintenance, maybe maintenance is the one in charge of buying equipment. And so you may need to talk to maintenance and say, hey, don't buy any equipment until we have the permit in hand. So, you know, we'll let you know, we, the environmental department, will let you know when you can go out and buy this piece of equipment. And then sometimes the legal folks may be involved because of a public notification. And so if the public gets involved and your legal gets involved, then they're gonna wanna um, be informed of where we are in the permitting process. Now, these are just three examples here, three departments, but we've seen cases where, you know, the permitting process can affect a lot of people within an organization. Um, that you know you would you wouldn't normally think would be um, involved in a permitting conversation, but we we do find that sometimes a lot of the planning folks are involved because they need to make you know they need to take this permit or the processing of this permit application into account if they're going to buy raw material or go out and procure contracts or or whatever the case. But you want to be sure that all the key stakeholders are involved involved and informed actually. Number four, you want to start early. You know, sometimes when it comes to permits and equipment, someone within the organization will buy a piece of equipment. Someone will tell them, hey, you know, you may need a permit for that. And then this, you know, this person comes to your office and knocks on the door and says, hey, I just bought this engine. It's going to be here at one o'clock. Uh, can we get a permit for it because someone told me on a you know whiteboard video that you know I need to have a permit before any construction can start you know can you go get my permit and you know my answer is you really need to have realistic expectations with respect to timing and the amount of time it takes to get a permit and so you can never start too early you know if there is a Small, a small discussion about wanting to purchase a piece of equipment, wanting to change a process or something like that, it never hurts to start the permitting process then. Because what will happen, and what we've seen this over and over and over again, is by the time they finally make the decision that they want to do X, they're gonna wanna, they wanna want the permit the next day. And a lot of times there are months between the first discussion and the, the go no go decision or you know maybe the decision that yes we're gonna buy this thing now there may be months in between and so if you don't start early enough by the time it by the time or, or by the time you reach the point where you need the permit it may be too late and the permitting process may take too long and the initiative may no longer be viable so have realistic expectations start early the timeline to get a permit from the air district depends and it depends on a number of things. Public notice is one, com um, completeness of your application is another one, there's a whole list. And so you want to be sure that you know that you take this timeline into account when you plan your capital project because again you can't have your permit or you can't start construction until you have your permit in hand. And so you want to take this timeline into account. How long is this timeline? It depends. 
We've seen it. We've seen, you know, we've seen facilities get a permit in three months. We've seen permits get issued between six and 12 months. A lot of times we recommend the six to 12 month timeline, probably closer to 12 months. But regardless, this timeline, you know, maybe that's realistic. You know, people, you know, these stakeholders up here need to be made, they need to know about this timeline so that they can have realistic expectations. A lot of times when projects fail or people get upset, it's because their expectations were just misaligned to what reality is. Um, sometimes, you know, the operations folks, when they hear this timeline, they don't even want to do it. You know, but even if that may make sense for the business, you know, sometimes they can't wait that long. Maybe the market will shift um, within that six to 12 month time frame. So again, you want to start early, you know, average time frame, six to 12 months. I know that's, 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 that's a really uh, broad window, but it's, it's realistic, personally, I think so. Um, within this timeline, you also want to build in a regulatory review. Now, for some facilities, namely the Title V facilities out there, when they get, when, when the AQMD processes their permit, that permit application or that draft permit will need to go to the EPA for a 45 day review. And that 45 day review is after the AQMD has finished processing the permit and they've arrived at the conclusion that yes, this piece of equipment can operate in compliance with all the rules and regulations. So therefore, we're gonna issue this permit. Here's a copy of the draft. Oh, and by the way, we have to send this to the, AQ, uh, to the EPA for a 45 day re of review to give them the opportunity to comment on this permit. Oftentimes, people totally forget about this 45 day review. And they're so focused on getting the permit from the AQMD that when they finally get to the point in the process where the AQMD is ready to issue the permit, they don't get their permit for 45 days and they wonder, well, where's our permit? And then they find out that, well, it's gonna take 45 more days to get a permit because it has to go to the EPA. So the point is, is that you wanna start early, have realistic expectations, understand that there they may be other people or other agencies involved with the permitting process other than the AQMD. And for Title V, that's gonna be the EPA. And they have 45 days to review the permit after the EPA reviews the permit. And more specifically, what happens is that the AQMD will process the permit application. They'll send you a copy of the draft. They'll send a copy of the permit that they plan to issue to the EPA. And the day that they send the application is day one. And it's a 45 day window. If the EPA doesn't respond within that 45 day period, then the, the AQMD will simply go ahead and just issue your permit. You'll just get in the mail. Is there a way to, to shorten this process? There is, you know, there, technically there's a way to, to, to facilitate everything that happens in life. That's what, that's what I personally believe in. There are ways to shorten this window and it takes a little bit of doing. We don't guarantee that we can do it. Depends who you call, but generally, in a pinch, they may be able to shorten that window for um, for good reason. But generally, you want to just stick to this 45-day window. Now, number four is start early. Uh, number four is start early. Number five is probably the most important thing that you can do to ensure success. When, on your next permitting project. And it's the one thing that you can do to ensure that you get your permit without any complications as quickly as possible. And it is to submit a complete permit application. And while that seems like a no-brainer, it's very interesting because we've heard estimates that the engineers at the Air District spend about 20% of their time going back and forth with the applicant trying to get more information. 20%, that's, that's kind of a, that's, that's a lot of time. And all of that going back and forth lengthens the process. It lengthens the timeline. It lengthens the amount of time needed to get your permit. It lengthens the amount of time until you can start construction. And so you want to compare, you want to prepare a 
complete permanent application. And that is one that has all of the correct forms. Not only the forms, it has all the correct fees, but most importantly, it contains all the data needed to process your permit application. And remember, the goal or what the engineer is trying to do when they process your permit application is he or she is trying to arrive at a conclusion. And that conclusion is, can, can this piece of equipment operate in compliance with all the rules and regulations of the air district? And there's, they're, they're trying to answer that one simple question. And they, the way, and what they, they use the forms, they use the fees, they use the information that is submitted with the permit application to arrive at their conclusion. And so, if, if, it, if it's not complete, then they need to go back, it lengthens the time, and, and it just stretches everything out. So, you want to be sure that your, your application is complete. It has all the data, it has all the fees, it has all the right forms. And the best way to ensure that you get everything that is needed is by talking with the AQMD and asking the question, how can we expedite this permitting process? What data do you need? And so, you know, knowing that, that's the single most important thing that you can do to ensure success on your next permit application is per submit a complete permit application. Um, you can talk to the AQMD. If it, if it doesn't seem like talking to them is the right thing to do, then, you know, look at the CPP manual. Talk to a consultant. Um, talk to a consultant. Talk, look in the CPP manual to be sure that you understand all of the things that need to go into this permit application so that it's complete. So there you have it. We talked about five ways. We talked about five ways to ensure success in your next permit application. Um, number one, retain staff. Number two, discuss the project with the AQMD if it makes sense. Number three, keep all the stakeholders informed. Number four, start early. And number five, the most important piece, submit a complete permit application. So there you have it, another episode of Invera at the Board. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.